but yeah, it just it just started because I just love music and wanted to do something just fun for myself. I never thought I'd upload it anywhere really or get it out there. I was just like, oh, this is fun for me to make for myself. Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes in musician and YouTube sensation Nick Nocturnal. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? How do you like that glow up? I practiced that for a long time. <laughs> I, I, it's it's usually people just say I'm the dude that makes the funny faces, so I I appreciate it. That's that's the best one I got so far. So or the not funny faces, because actually one of the more impressive things is how you don't you do the don't react to videos. Mm -hmm. I just watched uh, a whole bunch of them leading up to this interview, and uh, there's the funny, like, the cr don't cringe at TikTok, right? Yes. Oh, man, there's so many terrible, I, you know, again, I love my metal and rock community, and I like a lot of music that's not metal and rock, and I'm sure you do also, mm -hmm. but, yeah, it's pretty funny how bad people, <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like it's on purpose. Like, let's make a really terrible video so people will react and bug out, uh, or not. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, TikTok, it's, it's just its own thing. It's its own very, you know, freeing platform, which is, I almost envy that to a point because, you know, a lot of social media sites are very, you know, try, try to avoid doing this and try not to be cringy. Where TikTok, it's really just people don't care. Um, and some people just don't know, you know, and I think the audience in general is a bit, is a bit younger on TikTok. So it's just, you know, it's, it's, you know, dumb shit we'd all do when we were teenagers, probably be like, oh my God, dude, you should film that. So cool. <laughs> you know, so... It's, um, yeah, it makes sense in that capacity, but uh, I'm sure some people also are just like, you know, I'm just going to do this because I'm sure it's going to go viral because it's just dumb. So it makes sense. Right. It's it's the grandchild of Viva La Bam and Jackass, basically. Yeah, kind of. I mean, it's definitely also a continuation of, I guess, Vine. Um, reminds me a lot of Vine and like kind of MySpace, but not really. It's, it, it reminds me much more of Vine and yeah, some of that MTV era stuff that had nothing to do with music, really. But, yeah. <laughs> that was the meme all last year. It was like, MTV, 40 years of music, 40, uh, 40 years of MTV, 14 years of music. Basically, so, yeah. <laughs> which, you know, I, I still I still weep at that. But, you know, when I'm I'm older and uh, get off my lawn age. Um, as for you, though, man, I've always, I followed your, yeah, I followed your career for a long time. And, you know, obviously you're hugely entertaining and very successful on a bunch of different social media platforms. But be before we talk about the current Nick Nocturnal and how you got to be here, how did, you know, what was your origin, you know, if we were, you know, superhero comic book page one, what is the origin story of Nick the musician? Because you're a killer guitar player and artist, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, that uh goes all the way back to actually why i started youtube and basically even why you know i, I started doing any of this is just i i'm a guitarist first actually even though i don't play guitar as much nowadays so people i'll like throw up the guitar and people will actually still be like surprised <laughs> which is always funny to me it's like oh what is this nick can play guitar and i'm like yeah that's that's how it goes but yeah it just started with love from guitar from guitar hero you know growing up with my cousins and listening to metal music indirectly because of because of him and then um just loving music and trying to cover music and learning on guitar and then just being like hey it'd be cool if like i could try to write something like that so you know it i think i was like 13 14 maybe around there where i you know went to my local guitar store and i was like you know how do you do this stuff you know how do you record and they're like well you need this you need something like something called a daw you know and also just watching things on youtube um and you know going from there starting with the dog you know learning how to record very poorly but still doing it and just being excited like oh my god it recorded my guitar like that's insane you know like ah how does that even work you know with modern technology and then you know just doing riffs not understanding how bands actually work like what drums do not you know understanding that oh you're supposed to like quantize program drums and not just use your mouse to click on when you want the kick drum you're supposed to include cymbals and things like that uh and bass you know it was just like it was a lot of learning along the way um but yeah it just it just started because i just loved music and wanted to do something just fun for myself um i never thought i'd upload it anywhere really or get it out there i was just like oh this is fun for me to make for myself 
Right on. I almost wish I was a drummer so I could make fun of people who, who are not drummers that program drums. And I definitely am also just to throw shade on myself. And as always, I throw myself on every sword possible. I have like a record from like 15 years ago. I put out like a bedroom record with friends of mine, like a hardcore rap metal nice. band. And like there's the original demo. It was like no no hi-hat. So it's just <laughs> double kicks and ride cymbals and yep. no hi-hat at all. I'm like, dude, where's the hi-hat and the snare on this? Oh, yeah. Go back and <laughs> redo these drums before we press these CDs, you maniac. Um, which we sold out of those, uh, interestingly enough. Nice. But, um, yeah, man, you have such a great facility on guitar. And I think, like I said, yeah, it's funny that now you're so well-known. Just your personality and the funny things you do and, and the entertainment value you bring. But people don't realize what an accomplished guitar player you really are across a lot of different guitar genres, actually. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's it's... I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it is what it it is what it is. I mean, I realized it took a long time, but I realized like I didn't care if I was a guitarist, really. Like I just, I, I really, I, I start you know when I was younger, it was all about guitar. It was much more guitar. I love guitar than I love like metal. Um, so I was obsessed with it. I play it every day, and you know, want to pick it up and learn all these things. And once I got to a place where I just feel comfortable. Um, just with what I can do on the instrument, um, even though there's a lot, you know, I'll listen to stuff like Polyphia nowadays and be like, oh, God damn, that excites me. and makes me want to go pick up my guitar and learn how to do that whole, you know, all the hybrid picking and the harmonic work and the tapping and stuff. Um, yeah, I just over the years, I started to realize, uh oh, why am I really in this? And it's like, I just love metal music. So I, I stopped really caring how I um shared metal music like i stopped being like oh well i'm writing something so like the guitar has to be the focus i was like i just want a song i really like that i want to listen to over and over again so i don't really care if you know there's fancy new guitar stuff um i feel like i kind of expelled all that all, all those you know guitar excitement demons or whatever when i was younger and kind of got it out of the way um that i just i'm like yeah well you know i just that i became more of i just like metal music and want to share it and that's also why you know partially i was like ah yeah reactions why not like that's the median people want to see me do it i don't really care how i get the music out there anymore but if there's a song like you know that strikes that inspiration or things that strike the inspiration for like guitar specific then i'm like really excited and i'll go for it but yeah it's been a weird shift i guess that i, I didn't expect <laughs> Right on. And speaking of unexpected, I did not expect, did not have on my lifetime bingo card that reaction videos would take off like they have. And I understand to a certain extent, like, okay, you take like the atypical listener and put them into a situation they may not typically be in. And that makes for a good reaction video. Right. I was very reluctant to do my own reaction videos. We just started doing them because I have been a music journalist mostly for right. 15, 20 years and only a YouTuber for maybe doing it well for less than a handful. So we were like slow to do reaction videos because I'm always doing interviews. And right, right. we just started doing them. And I was like, oh man, this is it's exciting, but it's also like a pro it's super into being a process based thing, much more than when I write a review or prepare my interview questions like I did for you today. So I, I just like when you started doing the reactions, right? Beside obviously the view counts and people commenting and, and sharing and, you know, kind of building a little community around this. What was the thing that attracted you to doing these? Is it that you did them well right out of the gate? How did you sort of develop reaction uh, videos? Well, essentially they were supposed to be interchangeably going back and forth with uh, guitar covers because I had a want to share more music with my community, like through YouTube in some capacity and be like, hey, this new song just came out. You know, this is awesome. Like, I love this. Like, I want to share this with people um, or bands I'm excited about. But I realized there was bands that there wasn't like that didn't really use guitar that I was really excited about. So I was like, uh, it doesn't really make sense for me to do a guitar cover because I would do a guitar cover and I'd be bored. <laughs> you know, I'd be like, not a lot of guitar in here you know like like i'm really excited for what this band always does but like you know i'm, I'm not really like i don't really care what the guitar is gonna do so i just like huh well how do i you know exercise that creative spot and want to share of that music and so that's when i was like i see some people doing reactions i mean they've been doing it in the mainstream culture for forever it's just metal is always a few years behind on a lot of metas um so i was like oh Okay, like let's try this. So I just tried it, and people liked it, and I was like, "Really?" <laughs> so I was like, "Well, I mean, it accomplished my goal of wanting to still, you know, 
share cool music and and listen to things and expand my horizons even as a music lover all right like let's just keep doing this as like a oh well here's a band that most likely won't have guitar which sometimes i was wrong where it was like i would react to something that actually was like oh shit i actually want to do a guitar cover of this instead but whatever you know i did a reaction instead so i didn't really mind um but yeah i just it just became more of that and then people want more reactions instead and then also obviously you know reactions are just easier to do they take probably one fifth of the time and effort in my case than doing like a whole guitar cover um and it was also so it was a mixture of that being a thing people wanting the reactions more me coming off of the five years of only doing guitar covers <laughs> for like every day for new songs which yeah i think it just all mixed together and to, for me to be like ah like you know if a new song comes out i'll probably just react to it because I also started to have less time for some things like that. I was like, well, now I have Termina as a project. I'm working on other things. Like I'm working on original music stuff that like I'm really passionate about. And even though I, you know, I'm passionate about YouTube and, and all that, I was like, well, here are three new songs this week. Do I do guitar covers and make them take, make all of this take five times, you know, the time, or do I use that time to go work on the new Termina album? Right. So it's just, that's when I started to trade it off. And as long as I kept having fun doing the reactions and it's, unless it was a good, a song that I didn't really care, you know, after I reacted to, I wasn't like, oh no, I really am excited to do a guitar cover for, which some of them I was. And then I did a guitar cover as well after, um, I didn't really mind. So that's kind of where the shift in the meta mainly occurred. And like, I mean, they just also get more views, which is cool. But like, I, even nowadays, I feel like because the guitar covers i do are more special and more out there it's actually evening out um with it like i i'm sure if i did a cover of polyphia playing god it would get as many views as you know the reaction to it but it would take 10 times the time to do <laughs> right i just watched that and again i, I want to just dial it back for a second you did a brand new cover video recorded performed entertained every almost every day for five years that is nuts dude yeah nuts. Um, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and i mean they you know against i look back at some of those videos and i laugh because i'm like yeah i was pretty shitty um but you know like i did the best with what i thought i could do at that time and you know <clears throat> um if i thought it was bad at the time i wouldn't throw it out but you know looking back i'm like oh man i really uh thank god i got a little better over the years because those were not the best covers that's for sure um so yeah that was basically basically it just working at it and yeah it's just a lot of those it's a lot of them <laughs> quality over quantity by the way everybody who's trying to youtube and twitch stream yes. i know that the sort of platforms are trying to tell you to just constantly create but it is draining and it does lessen probably and i'm guilty of this too i will i have done an absurd amount of interviews this year, more than probably ever in a short span of time. And I'm burned out. I was burned out all of May as a result. Um, just out of curiosity, I know you're really successful on a bunch of platforms, but just strictly talking about YouTube, as you grew on YouTube, because you really, this is really the golden era of YouTube. You are one of the, in my opinion, one of the better YouTubers out there in terms of Thank everything. You. Do you feel like YouTube is still the, the platform to get started on? Or if you were starting from scratch today, would you just start on Twitch? Um, I wouldn't start on Twitch in any capacity. Um, there's no discoverability there. There's, there's very little, which is tough for a new creator, a new brand. It's really tough. Um, it's worth it. Again, when I came over, it was perfect because I already had a brand. So I had, you know, a, a good starting point. But like starting from nothing and grinding on there is rough. <laughs> it's it's tough. I love Twitch, but that is one of the hardest platforms for discoverability by far. Um, I would start YouTube and TikTok and that's it. And I'd go super hardcore on those two. And I'd expand it to the occasional like Instagram and like Twitter. Um, I wouldn't probably care about facebook that much unless it's just copy pasting what i post on one of the other platforms so it's not really additional content but if it was like pure content it would be youtube and tiktok unless i was doing something very special that would have require a live streaming meta in which case then i would focus fully on twitch from nothing but then go hardcore on clips for youtube and tiktok um but it would have to be a concept that really made sense so that it would um 
translate well to clips videos that actually would hold their own on both YouTube and TikTok. But that's that that I'd say is a more ambitious but higher risk reward uh, way to do it is Twitch main, but then do not actually make new content for YouTube and TikTok. Just upload your clips, but like really put time in knowing how to do it. Um, but I would probably go with the safer option, which is YouTube, TikTok, and just grind the hell out of them, and that's it. Nice. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, as people who watch these videos know, when I'm not doing Ghost Cult, I'm a mu I'm a professional marketing expert. I do social media and digital marketing. Oh, I've done quite a bit of music marketing. Shout out to Social Blade <laughs> for yes. helping me stalk all your socials in one cool place that gave us estimates on things like revenue and traction. That's really cool. Uh, yeah. People want to start being a you know an entertaining person on social media i recommend social blade in terms of doing a comparison of the landscape and where you want to find yourself uh so nick is you know you've been very successful again transfer that over to other platforms out of curiosity what is the amount of time uh if you could just like ballpark it pr preparation recording and editing what what how do you split up that pie Ooh, it depends what I'm doing. Uh, they're all different. Some videos I've done take me literally three days. Some take me an hour. And I, I try to avoid it because I want the content to be decided by why, what I want to make, be the best video. But sometimes it is like, ooh, what's the best video I can do within the time I have? <laughs> you know, which is something even I've actually dialed back a little because I'm just like, you know what? I don't care if I even release a video or five, three perfect videos this week. I'll just not release one and wait for one that's worth it. Um, Again, I keep shift, you know, that's a shift in mindset as you grow. But in terms of timing, I mean, Twitch in general for me is two and a half hours, five days a week. Um, so Tuesday to Saturday, uh, 5 p.m. to like 7.30 p.m., pretty consistent. So that's already a good chunk of time. That's arguably sometimes sometimes more I spend a week on YouTube than on I spend on YouTube. TikTok, I spend usually five minutes. <laughs> uh, Instagram takes me like an hour or two to get like something that is fun. Twitter is any shit post I can think of within 20 seconds. Um, Facebook is copy paste of Instagram for now, at least for me. And then YouTube, it depends what I'm doing. Like if I'm doing a reaction that can take an hour to two. Um, if I want to have like, if I want to make it nice and do it up, you know, if I just want to like kind of throw it out like McDonald's and some shit, like I, I've, I have done it and this was my high speed I've ever done. I think a reaction like start to finish with the zoom ins and the edits think was 20 minutes including like like to get it live including thumbnail that was like that was during when i was doing the architects reactions to the whole album super dumb wouldn't do it again um i basically had to mcdonald's that shit to get all of them out within the same day so i got it down to 20 minutes which was like even i was surprised i was like damn that is just bad <laughs> it's just like no one that no like that's just, i really should have taken more you know that's stupid yeah, usually they're like an hour to two hours. Um, and then like my Monday videos, which are more special, usually that that can take like up to eight hours. And like I said, some videos like my heaviest riff series like that, those straight up just take me multiple days. Like those, those just... are my favorite right now of, of oh. what you're doing currently. That's absolutely my favorite. I, I, don't, I try. I don't as it is. I don't really watch mm -hmm. a lot of other interviewers because I'm trying to keep my stuff pure selfishly is a, is a weird a weirdo journalism thing but yeah i love the heaviest riff series man because i love just yeah riffs those are my, those riffs are my god yeah they take a while because i have to compile well first i have to know what i'm talking about so i have to do you know even though i i'm prompted because i feel as though i have i don't want to use the word authority but somewhat knowledge of of that field like drop c you know i know that tuning. i'm a guitarist i know that tuning very well i know some of the best riffs in that tuning um but then I also have to do research and get stuff outside my scope, you know, because that's a lot of a lot of research of that's that's where I've learned a lot of different bands and different styles. Like, especially when I did some of them, I remember like heaviest riffs, like in the standard versions, like D standard, C standard, all that stuff. A lot of that is not has nothing to do with metalcore, which, again, that's, you know, just I love metalcore. Right. That's my kind of forties. Um, so I had to just discover a fuck ton of new bands that I never knew of before and really be like, wow, this is like the most kick ass, like black metal riff that like people don't really talk about this band. Like, OK, I just learned something new. So, but yeah, that whole thing, like that takes the, the whole day of research. And then the next day is me tracking everything and recording. It, and then the next day is me filming and then editing it. And then you in the thumbnail, it's it's those are 
Those take a toll. <laughs> How do you? Uh, oh, by the way, hashtag McDonald's that shit. I'm going about to make that yes, a thing. Hashtag but um, <laughs> how do you? Uh, just uh, you know, kind of a last process question for you. How do you time manage all this stuff? Do you use do you use a software? Do you just keep a calendar, whiteboard, calendar. dartboard? What do you? I do? live by a calendar. If I if my calendar crashes, I'm pretty sure I'm fucked. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like I'm just. Like I, I don't really have a proper backup. Like if my calendar just stops working, it has all of the everything I need to do, um, and and what time I need to finish it by and do it by. I'm pretty sure I am just gonna be chaos that entire week. So, uh, which is funny because in school I hated planners. I never used any of that stuff. And then, um, yeah, I was like, as soon as I started doing this, it's like, nah, like I live by this calendar every day. I have a schedule of what I need to do, what I need to do it by. If I don't get it done, then it bleeds into the next day, which then screws up the schedule of that day. And then that screws up the schedule of the next day. You need to get it done in time. And that's all. There it is. Time management is everything. I'm not that great at it. Uh, what'd you go to school for? Was it, we were talking about music school or something else? I went to get a degree in accounting. Actually, I have a commerce degree. I didn't get the accounting degree because my grades in accounting were too bad. Um, so I just got the the basic kind of commerce business degree, um, which I didn't learn anything from, which was great. I just learned how much I didn't want to do that field and didn't want to kind of and how much I actually wanted to do music instead. So that is the knowledge I got from the place you're supposed to learn knowledge about not music. <laughs> Wisdom and knowledge yeah. we like it just as a final kind of final thought man i'm really excited for your your own original music what can you share with us about this upcoming you know originals and and maybe the format you're going to put it out in and anything you can kind of tease is fine with me yeah um all right so um july 24th is going to be a new nick knock track um which is going to be Again, that's just a fun thing, which I'm doing while I wait for vocalists to finish their parts in my other projects. I'm like, well, all right, here's something where I have more control over when it's actually done. And I can just explore and have fun doing stupid stuff that, you know, I can pop off maybe. And if not, whatever, it's fun. Um, that's going to be the first ever, I think, in the world fall trap song. So that's going to be an interesting mixture. Some people will super hate it and I'm going to love that. And some people might enjoy it. Um, but regardless of either or, uh, two weeks later, July 8th, will be the new Terminus single's debut called Translucent, um, which is very exciting, which I know that's the one everyone's waiting for, including I was myself <laughs> waiting for that one. So we're just going to go be we're going to be filming that literally this week. I'm also filming Nick Knock actually on Sunday. Yeah. So June 24th, Nick Knock, which is crazy. And then July 8th will be a new Termina. Which is going to debut who our new who our new unofficial drummer is because he's not in the band, but he's the person who's doing drums for the entire album, which is wild. Properly professionally mixed and produced this time, we're not soloing it. I mean, we we, we kind of produce the whole track ourselves, but in terms of you know little spices here and there, we do have an actual producer who's very well known in the scene who's mixed basically all of the modern metalcore stuff going on now. Yeah, we're gonna have a video. We're still working with the guy we worked with last time, Patrick, to do some crazy visual stuff um but that's going to be coming july 8th on my youtube channel and that's just going to be a big premiere rollout you know and going crazy with it it's not going to announce any album or anything it's just going to be like hey here's a new terminal track um so those two are the big things of focus for now just because i have in my calendar i have to get ready to film these <laughs> Um, but other than that, um, the, you know, I have a project with Phil from all that remains that we're kind of just, you know, slowly working out and getting done. There's not really a rush on that, you know, two thousands metalcore will always sound cool. So like, it's not like, <laughs> it's not like, a, oh no, this is the trend right now. Let's get it out. It's kind of just like, you know, when it's done, it's done. Um, and the last thing, which I didn't really talk about much, but it was a big, pro big project, um, was actually we, I was supposed to have released Slavic metal Two uh at the beginning of this year and um it features a lot of amazing people it features dimitri from chakran um it features totally still on vocals and uh, we were going to get a special deathcore feature from the grizzly bear man himself from russia and um sadly of course there's a world things that have happened literally a couple days after i got the solo from dimitri which it was just like, all right, this is not happening now. Um, you know, it's uh, no one. I, yeah, it, it's just wild. But uh, I don't know if that will ever be released. I don't know if it'll be released this year. I don't know if it'll be released. I don't know if it'll <laughs> when it might come out. Um, but that's that is done. It is done. It's just we needed to film the video. Um, 
but yeah, that that's the other project. So yeah, but other than that, YouTube more specific, big three things, Nick Knock, Termina, and then the project with Phil. Um there this year there will be tracks from all of those coming. And then I also am still doing covers with Will Ramos. We got some stuff coming when he comes back from tour. So it's uh it's it's busy. It's going. <laughs> <laughs> a little busy. Nick, you know, amazing stuff there. Uh, Will is incredible, by the way. Nick Nocturnal, taking us away from our everyday pain to entertain and enlighten us. Uh, I, you've been an inspiration to me and Ghost Cult. I want to thank you, and thank you for sharing your time with us and, and a little bit of your secret sauce. Thank you so much, man. No problem. Thanks for having me.